you guys and welcome to another episode of A Better You. I am your host, Fernando Ramirez, and welcome to this week's episode. Today we have a very interesting topic that I have so many ways on where this can go. I've got my sheet of notes in front of me, I've got two books to take references from, and I just have a lot of ideas to talk to you guys about. The title of today's episode is all about embracing the boring days and being okay with mundane life. I think with social media, it is really easy to scroll online and see what all your friends are doing, seeing what the influencers are doing, seeing what the celebrities are doing, and we constantly have this stimulation that tells us we should be doing more, we should be doing better, we should be traveling, we should be living up this party lifestyle, we should be spending our money, we should have designer items. Like There's all this noise coming at you from all different corners that when you are living these regular, normal days, they may seem really freaking boring. In this episode, we are going to address the two types of people that I think could be listening to this episode and the first type of person is the people that have very crazy chaotic lives they're doing a lot they're doing things every day they're almost a little bit too stressed out and they're living in this state of chaos and almost kind of like they're running on the spot and so for those people I want to give some tips and some reasons on why living a mundane life is actually super beneficial and how to just slow down and stick to routine and the benefits that come with that. I feel like that's where I would categorize myself as I tend to not want to stick to routine. I find it boring and I'm just like, I kind of hate doing those mundane tasks. And the second type of person that I think this podcast episode can be helpful for is for the people that actually love their boring days. And in fact, they live a very repetitive lifestyle and they actually want to switch things up and spice things up in order to spark some maybe inspiration in their days or just get out of those redundant routines. Before we get into this episode, make sure you're subscribed, make sure you're following this account on all different social platforms. Thank you for clicking on this episode. I'm excited to talk and dive into this. And to give you guys a little update on me, I have been doing so well this week. I have been in the perfect routine, which is why I got inspired to make this episode in the first place, because this week has been my get my life together week actually go to bed early, wake up early, go to the gym. I did make an episode saying that I wanted to do the 75 hard and that I was going to vlog it. And then things kept coming up that I haven't been able to properly start it or properly film it. But knowing that I want to do the 75 hard and that I have a trip coming up in February, I've basically been doing like half of the challenge already, like working out twice a day, reading every day, sticking to somewhat of a clean diet. Like I've been doing all the things. I just haven't been filming it, which is really annoying because I feel like I wasted so many good days that would have been in the vlog without vlogging it so I mean side note I feel like this is one of those moments where influencers get kind of like in a little bit of a mental dilemma when they're actually living their life and then they don't vlog it and they're like oh my god I'm not getting content out of it and then we have to remind ourselves that like we're also allowed to live our lives and not document every single thing we do so there's a good and a downside to this situation but just to inform you guys I have been in a routine and I've been doing the mundane I've been enjoying it and it actually it's it's not as bad as it's it's not as bad as it seems Okay, let's get into it. So as I said earlier, we're going to talk about the first type of person. This is the type of person that is very similar to me. The person that is in love with the chaos and slightly addicted to the cortisol. If you're unfamiliar with what cortisol actually is, it is just the stress hormone. And just for a little bit of insight, it says that as your body perceives stress, your adrenal glands make and release the hormone cortisol into your bloodstream. And so the reason why I'm bringing this into this conversation is because I feel like I myself am someone who supposedly thrives off of stress like I feel like I get work done faster I procrastinate a lot until that stressful time comes and then I feel like I've got a fire under my butt and I feel ready to attack whatever I want and I feel like it happens in many other ways like for example I love listening to loud music I love going to like weightlifting classes and like cycling and just like things that give your body that cortisol and it's actually not good for you it can become very addictive and I have here that having a high cortisol actually establishes a new set point in your body around which you organize the rest of your life from so I guess this isn't the case for every single person but I feel like this could be a scenario for a lot of people where they find it difficult to slow down and just be at ease with things that aren't as fast-paced a little more boring and in this scenario we're talking about the mundane if you don't know what mundane means mundane just means something that lacks interest or excitement and is dull so I think a lot of the time when we think about routine we perceive that to be kind of boring kind of redundant just not as 
exciting as, you know, these other cortisol inducing days or even days, maybe they're not causing you stress, but it's just faster paced. It's a little bit out of the ordinary. Maybe every single day is different for you. Maybe some days you're sleeping really late. Maybe some days you're sleeping really early. Maybe some nights you're going out. Maybe you're going out multiple times a week. Basically the mundane just seems like the worst option of the two and something that you don't want to do, which one, if you find yourself being in this position of maybe being addicted to the chaos or enjoying it, maybe this will give you a little bit of inspiration to tackle that, find the root of that and try to fix that and eliminate the more stress that you can because it is so bad for you. It might not even be something that I actually love doing, but it's just something that I do out of nature. And I feel like that's how every bad habit starts. Like you may not even enjoy doing it, but it's all that you know. So doing something different and doing something that you may deem boring or something that you would have never wanted to become is kind of like you're almost repelling away from that. You do not want to be like that. But as I was looking online and looking for some tips on enjoying the mundane, there were a lot of quotes that I found that I feel like really applied to this conversation. The first one being that the truth is life is 99% mundane. A person's life is a collection of all the moments that happen in the middle, which I completely agree. I think it's easy to base a life, maybe one that you see online based on their highlight moments, maybe the trips that they took or maybe huge milestones that they accomplished or just flashy things. I feel like that is what may seem like a better life, but the truth is their emotions might not reflect that. Again, if they are having that constant state of stress or maybe they were actually sad throughout all those big moments, it doesn't make their life technically any better than the person who is living a simple life and is actually enjoying every single day, is happy every single hour. Maybe not to that full extent because obviously no one's happy all the time, but if most of their days involve them being happy, realistically, they are going to live a much happier, healthier life than the person with all these accomplishments that actually has like a deteriorating mental health and physical health. And somebody else, his name is Adrian Childs, I believe, said that the secret to happiness is embracing the boring and claiming the mundane and rejoice in repetition. And then the last quote I have here is by Brene Brown. And she says, a good life happens when you stop and are grateful for the ordinary moments that so many of us stream roll over to try to find those extraordinary moments. Knowing those quotes, having those in your mind, saying them often, reminding yourself of them is really helpful whether you are comparing yourself online to someone that has all this exciting stuff going on for them or if you almost feel guilty for living a simple life. I had this conversation with my friends actually the other day and we were talking about those TikToks. This is so cringe, but um, where they go like, I think I like this little life. Okay, if you're not on TikTok, you're like, what is she talking about? There is an audio, which means like a little like soundtrack where someone says that and they always like put that sound over people living like their mundane life and romanticizing it. And I'm gonna be honest, my first reaction to this was just like, I just don't get it. Why would you wanna live that simple life? Like, I just don't get it. It seems like so not the goal. I don't wanna be living a simple life. I wanna be exciting. I wanna move to New York. I wanna do all this crazy stuff. And then I was talking to my friends. I'm like, I think I need to unpack why this is bothering me. Not that it actually bothers me, but like, why do I feel almost repelled by this idea? And when it's probably actually just better for you. And they were kind of just like, yeah, Fernanda, that needs actually unpacking. And what is wrong with a simple life? Most people are actually happier like that. And I mean, this goes into a whole different direction, but like the point of existing is just to be. You don't have to be productive. You don't have to be doing things. If you are relaxing and you are doing nothing, you know, it's in our human nature to do that as well. And it's actually super helpful to our mental health and our physical health. And again, those are the people that welcome the most amount of peace and just serenity into their life. So they're probably living. They do not want to live that crazy chaotic life. Not to say that that life also isn't ideal. It's just, I think it's a really healthy thing to have a balance of both and not be repelled by the mundane or dread those days that are a little more boring. The other thing that I want to say about these so-called boring days is that a lot of the times when you are working towards a bigger goal, you have a lot of these days that are very repetitive and it really does require yourself to put your head down and work. Whether that be you're going to get a degree and you're in school every day or you're trying to work up to a certain position at your job and a lot of the days that require you doing a good job in the position that you currently are in or maybe you're trying to become an artist and it takes years and years of practice where you're working up to that certain style of art or even for example for the people that look up influencers or youtubers or, or people that are present on social media and they look at them and think oh that happened overnight they just get to blow up and post videos and that is actually completely not the case you know they've probably been working at that certain craft for years and years and a lot of the years maybe they weren't even recognized for the work that they did I saw a post the other day and it was saying how every overnight success is actually like five years in the making and I thought it was really interesting as well because it's true you know you see a new singer you see a new celebrity you see a new artist and you're like oh my god where'd they pop out of did they just come out of nowhere and it's like secretly they've been working on their craft for like 
10 years. And if during that time they just gave up because their days were boring, they were repetitive, they would never be where they are now. And so I just want to also say that as well, because everything that is worth having, everything that is worth living for, every big goal that you have takes so much longer than you actually give it credit for, which is why you need to enjoy those everyday processes that happen in order to get there. So I think it's important to accept that you are going to have to work hard no matter what it is that you want, even if it's a lifestyle that you want. And those days leading up to that time will be boring. So you have to make sure that one, you accept that that is the reality, but also fill those days up with little bits of happiness throughout because that is what is going to be your life at the end of the day. It's not those big moments that you have every few months or every few years. It is the daily practices that you have. I saw someone online say that that pill is easier to swallow once you realize that it is something that is a requirement and not optional. And by the requirement, I mean working hard and living those repetitive days. I feel like sometimes I get in the habit of having too much fun and then when I have to do actual routine, I'm like, no. And I just feel like it's the worst thing in the world when in reality, every single person in the world is dealing with the same things and that is just what life is about. Which side point here, this is why listening to my episode, How to Romanticize Your Life, is a very good episode to listen every few months or every few weeks or whenever you need a little bit of re-inspiration because romanticizing your mundane and romanticizing the everyday is what is gonna make your life feel a little bit shinier than maybe if you didn't. There is a lot of pride in being okay with routine and being okay with structure and being good at that as well. In my head when I'm talking about this subject, I'm thinking about a friend that I have and she is so routine based and I would be a little bit more chaotic and I'd be like, hey, let's go out, let's do something fun, let's do this. Why are you going home to do chores? Like, why would you do that? And she would always be like, oh, I know I'm so boring. Like, I just have things to do. But in reality, she's not being boring. She is taking responsibility of her life, of her everyday things and treating herself with a lot of respect, honestly. I think it is difficult to be an adult and especially for all the young adults or you know, people around my age that maybe watch this episode, know that if you are taking a break from the scene, taking a break from being a little chaotic, maybe just maturing a bit, adulting a bit, and getting in the routine of going to the gym every day, of going to work every day, of doing your night routine, your morning routine, it is not something to be ashamed of. Not that you maybe would be ashamed of, but it is not something to frown upon because it's actually really hard to make that lifestyle a part of your everyday non-negotiables if you're not used to that. And again, being able to do all those mundane tasks but well and those routines well will actually again propel you into a better life and the life that you actually want to live the other thing I want to say about learning to enjoy these everyday in quotation boring days is that if you're doing all of these tasks very intentionally it actually is a lot more meaningful there is this tiktoker and her name is Nara Smith I believe you guys should watch her if you don't already but she does a lot of like cooking videos and home cleaning and she raises her kids so she's like a stay-at-home mom and she just does a lot of the housework things that in my head I would find probably kind of boring and maybe a lot of people watching her life think it's mundane because she's just doing everyday things but the way that she even like cuts her food this is gonna sound so specific but she's like so intentional with the knife every hand motion every placement of a cup every grab of a fork I don't even know everything is so soft and gentle and it almost seems like she's in a meditative state and everything just turns out so beautifully like I feel like when you put effort into making your life beautiful it is very evident from the outside and she looks so calm she almost talks so slow it kind of stresses me out as somebody <laughs> I'm doing it right now that talk so fast that is kind of this go 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 mentality and honestly I admire that about her she's probably way more calm within probably more productive than the chaotic one I feel like she's so good at doing little things that make her every day better she's CEO of romanticizing her life that's why people like her content so much but she could be having regular ice cream watching TV but yet she is grabbing like her iridescent bubbly bowl a scoop of vanilla ice cream in there that's like perfectly round she's putting olive oil drizzle on her her ice cream to enhance the flavors of vanilla. She's like grabbing a tiny little amount and like tasting it, savoring it. She's in like full glam for no reason, just like at her house, but it's like so natural and wearing like a beautiful dress. And then she's like probably watching some great show that she loves or maybe reading a book, like literally turning the simplest everyday activity into making even the mundane seem really exciting and even interesting for another person to consume. Like I will be watching a full five minute video of her eating ice cream because everything she does 
look so meaningful. I also think it is very important to cherish every single day and be so grateful for every single day that you have. As you know, the days come and go, as somebody said. The days are long, but the years are short. And if you are wishing and praying every day for a time that is going to come in the future, or even you're thinking about something that happened in the past, you're never being present in the moment. And the present is all we have. So that is something that I'm guilty of. I feel like I definitely need to work on being more present and enjoying the present moment. And also this is another point, but not being so hard on yourself to be perfect and just looking for perfection in everyday things. I think there is beauty in slowing down and noticing the things around you. I think there's a huge talk right now about how this is a little bit of a different topic here, but I feel like it kind of goes hand in hand with enjoying your everyday life and being grateful for the small moments. And that is that there's this talk right now about how the internet back in the day when it first started used to be somewhere that you could go to. And whenever you would maybe go to the kitchen or something, you would type with your friends and be like, gotta go talk to you later. You would actually disconnect from the computer and go live your everyday life. I remember doing this myself. I remember being on Facebook Messenger being like, TTYL, gonna go have dinner. Whereas like now you bring your phones everywhere with you. You are constantly online. You never have to tell someone, gotta go talk to you later because our lives and our internet lives are like intertwined. Like it's basically the same thing. It's not a place anymore. Whereas it is just how life is. And for that reason, we should actually take more time away from our phones, away from these fast paced comparing habits that happen online and just living out in the present moment and noticing even like the birds in the sky. Maybe if there's a little animal coming out of the ocean, maybe the little ants on the floor, lifting little trees, <laughs> like just noticing the little things all around you. It makes life so much more meaningful. And then you notice that things aren't even that mundane actually. There's actually extraordinarily beautiful things happening all around that you just don't notice when you are so focused on other things that don't really matter or other things that are just mere moments of your life, not your everyday life. I usually never go on walks. I don't know why. I kind of hate walks. But recently I've been in a more walking phase and I've been taking my time to take the long way home rather than the routes that I normally go for. And I was going to talk about this in a different section, but I'll just bring it up here for a minute. As I've been taking these new routes and I've been looking away from my phone and actually looking up, I feel like I noticed so many cute little moments throughout my walk home that literally just spark some joy for that moment when it is nighttime and I'm thinking back to the day and the best moments that happened. A lot of the times it's those little cutie little things that you wouldn't even think about. Like the conversation that I saw and it was between two old people and they seemed really happy or maybe you hear kids playing or maybe there's a street performer and they're playing jazz. I also think it's important if you're journaling and you're thinking about why you need to get into a more everyday structured routine and take away that negative connotation that the mundane is boring or repetitive or lacks interest or is unenthusiastic is asking yourself who told you that the mundane was bad. I think a lot of the times it can be the media as we were talking about earlier. A lot of the times we're comparing our everyday life to people's very big moments and we're like, oh my God, why is our life not like that? So that could be a reason, but really just asking yourselves like who told me that this was bad? Am I just shaming myself for thinking that this is bad? Who gave me the idea that what I'm doing is boring when it's actually very meaningful to me? Just asking yourself that question and then realizing that all the answers are kind of silly. Another thing that I think can be really helpful when you're trying to get into a routine is finding a routine that you actually love and a routine that works for you. I talked about this in one of my recent podcast episodes. So if you listen to all my podcasts, this might be pretty fresh in your brain, but I was talking about the book 101 Essays to Change the Way that You Think. And one of the chapters was talking about how there could be a parent that has to take care of their child and take them to school and, you know, make them lunch and pick them up and drive them to sports. And there could be someone else. Maybe it's a girl in her early 20s and she has her morning routine, her skincare routine. She goes to work. She takes the sky train home. She has dinner with her friends, then does her night routine and goes to bed. Those two people have very different routines. They're going to look very different. Not one person can compare it to someone else. And that doesn't make either options bad. Whatever routine works for them is what works for them. And so when you are crafting out your routine, make sure that you have that in mind and realize that your routine doesn't have to look like somebody else's if you don't like everything that person is doing or it doesn't align with what you're doing. You just have to find a routine that actually works for you, that you can stick with, and that actually brings you peace and makes you feel good within. This may not be everyone's first choice or first idea when it comes to finding a new routine that works for them, but if you want, watch a whole bunch of YouTubers, lifestyle YouTubers, lifestyle TikTokers, maybe read some magazines, maybe spend 
a day, drafting up what your new perfect routine looks like, even the mundane, having rules for set days of the week, and around that you can craft what routine works for you and one that you're truly excited about. Those everyday chores can seem really daunting and boring, but if you fill up your daily chores with something that is fun for you, then it's a lot easier to get through those tasks. Whether that be playing music while you're cleaning or having a little reward system for yourself after you get something done or even like a not a punishment, but like if you don't get something done, you can have something that is like you're not going to be able to do. Or maybe it's looking forward to something during the day that you have to like do certain habits in order to redeem. Whatever it is, try to add some joy into your day. Maybe it's finding a buddy that is actually going to be your body double. So maybe you go to a cafe with someone else and that inspires you to do your work or work on a certain thing for a certain period of time or finding a workout buddy so that you are held accountable and that you can actually get working out into your daily routine and you can have that little bit of joy seeing somebody or maybe it's taking the bus with someone else you have a little chat during the day just adding that bit of fun into your days truly makes the biggest difference I feel like my life got so much better when I started adding little bits of joy into my days whether that was seeing my favorite people at the gym that I go to or having a night routine that I'm really excited about just making every single day count and having things to look forward to is what is going to set your years apart from other ones and make that one better than the last one. Now on the other hand, if I'm talking about all of this and you are actually somebody that is very good with routine, you have your routine down packed. Maybe your routine is going to school, seeing certain friends every single weekend, or maybe it's working nine to five, Monday to Friday, and then doing nothing on the weekends. Maybe it's staying home, not really going out, not doing anything fun. And in fact, your routine is too, too rigid. It's too straightforward. You're actually like, no, 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 no. Getting into routine isn't my problem. The problem is that I'm so in routine that I'm actually really bored. I'm actually not doing anything fun and the days are going by so quickly. Then this next portion of the podcast is for you. The first thing I want to say is that if you're having days that are a little bit too mundane, it means that you're not doing things that are stimulating enough to your brain to feel excited or to feel like your days are very different. The more that you do different things throughout your days, the more that the days actually feel different and the longer the years actually feel. I don't know about you guys, but when I get into a routine and I do the same thing day in and day out and I actually stay consistent with it I'm like where did the time even go I swear it was January 1st yesterday and now it is like February 1st like I don't know how the time passes so fast and that is because we get so used to working on autopilot but that is exactly why we need to get out of the norm and do things that switch up those days so that the days feel so much longer and you're actually even more productive but in different ways maybe work is too easy for you or you haven't found a good hobby to keep you entertained I have a lot of episodes that can help you with this scenario if this is you I have so many episodes on different ways that you can spice up your life or different hobbies that you can try or different rituals for self-care or you know whatever it may be there's a lot of ways that you can add different aspects into your life and if this is you it's actually it's actually a good thing you know look at this situation as you've already mastered the hard part which is getting into a good routine and being consistent and being disciplined enough to stick with that and now you get to explore and expand your horizon and try new things to see what works for you to make that daily routine feel a little bit more exciting exciting. This way you are forced to try new things and you can no longer avoid it. One of the biggest ways that you can get out of the habit of your routines and actually switch things up is by just going slightly out of routine. As I said earlier, this is one of those scenarios where it's actually better if you take different routes home every single day. I've been doing this recently. Whenever I go to the gym, I actually walk home and I take the long way. And not only am I getting more steps, which is super important to me, and I'm trying to walk a little bit more in 2024, but the days feel really different. My mind is a little bit more engaged. I'm like, where am I going? I'm listening to a podcast so I'm like thinking at the same time I'm not being on my phone just being a scrolling zombie I'm like looking around and being like oh my god that's a really cute spot why have I never seen that before oh my god that's a really cute cafe I should go there today this could be taking a new route to work maybe taking a different walk home maybe this means whenever you go on your hot girl walks you actually go in a completely different area this could even mean if you go to a coffee shop and you usually always get the same drink maybe you could try out something that is new on their menu or maybe this is going to a completely different coffee shop or maybe this is actually going to a restaurant and doing your work with your laptop at like a fancy bar instead of a coffee shop. I honestly love doing that. Keeps me on my toes too because I'm like constantly worried about how I'm being perceived, which not that you should be doing, but it's kind of like a game. It's like, what alter ego am I going to put up front today? Maybe I'll wear something that I don't normally wear. Maybe I'm embodying a different aesthetic, which I know nowadays is like not controversial, but people are like, oh my God, have personal style. Stop trying to embody these aesthetics, which I get it. I believe you too, but sometimes maybe if you're bored of your everyday personal style, you can embody a certain aesthetic and walk around 
feeling confident in that aesthetic and feeling like a little bit different. I found this sentence online and I don't know why I can't say it. The word is monotonous. Mon Mo monotonous <laughs> it says if you do the former and maybe the same routine has become too monotonous you could benefit from some unpredictability i always think that to myself sometimes and i'm like is this me trying to be chaotic and actually bringing unpredictableness to my life and this is actually not a good thing or am i just trying to spice up my life you know what to do i think another thing you can do is add in some more spontaneity into your life and just say yes more often if you did your whole routine monday to friday and you were ready for your night routine on friday but someone randomly says hey like we have this birthday that we're going to do you want to come with us instead of going with the routine and saying no like you normally would maybe saying yes and you know being like I have done my routine Monday to Friday I have done my job let's go out on the weekend then when you come Monday morning back ready for your routine you can be like oh my god guess what I did this weekend and your weekends will even seem more exciting I feel like something that I try to do is staying in routine Monday to Friday and the minute the weekends come I'm gonna fill those days up I have a habit of like never wanting to stay home when I have the chance even though I probably probably should because that would be you know the example of like living a peaceful calm life but ever since I was younger every single weekend or every single day off we would have my mom would be like okay let's go downtown what are we doing are we going to the farmer's market are we going to the museum are we going to a new restaurant like we were always doing something and so I think I have that ingrained even till now where like if I have a day off oh you best bet I'm not doing nothing I'm trying to figure out what to do it honestly makes my days feel really exciting that like when I come back Monday and I ask like somebody else hey what'd you do this weekend either they have something really exciting to tell me or they're like oh like you know the usual nothing really and then I I'm just like well guess what I did and I kind of sound annoying because I'm like I probably did a lot that weekend but like it honestly makes my life exciting and I feel like they are always interested to hear what you did and so if that is you and you feel like your weekends you don't do much on try adding some new things into your life on those days that you are free for example if you know you know but I signed up for ballet recently and I've been going and that is something that is completely out of the ordinary for me that is not in my routine it is something really outside of my comfort zone and every time I'm there <laughs> I'm so mentally stimulated because I'm so on edge low-key the whole time but like in the best way I feel like I am learning new things I'm meeting new people that I probably wouldn't meet otherwise I'm thinking new thoughts you know new pathways are being formed in my brain maybe I step outside of my ballet class I walk around I'm like oh there's like 10 new coffee shops around here let me go to a new one. Oh, there's a new drink on the menu let me just get that and then after that I was bored and I was like what should I do I just look on my phone like what's around me I went thrifting for the day and then I went to go get my nails done that was a very spontaneous day I had no plan but I just went to an area and just saw where the wind was taking me I had a lot of fun honestly I feel like I had finished that day with my cup pretty filled and just with a lot of new experiences that it made my weekend feel so much longer than if I just stayed home and like did chores some other ideas in ways that you can spice up your life if you feel like things are getting too redundant is to sometimes switch up the way that you yourself look this may be getting a haircut or dyeing your hair or trying out a new style as little as these changes may be sometimes changing something within my appearance actually is the catalyst for me wanting to change something in real life or kind of almost adopting a new identity I mean when I cut my hair I kind of decided to go for the more clean girl look which obviously you don't have to do that if you don't want to but like it kind of makes you embody a new type of energy or if you've been feeling very stale and you want to spice it up and feel a little bit more glamorous maybe you get hair extensions or maybe you dye your hair a different color or maybe it's even getting your brows done or your lashes done any of those superficial little things here and there honestly make even the everyday tasks feel a little bit more exciting like when I got my hair extensions put in I would walk around the city feeling like a 10 out of 10 and I felt so confident and like I just wanted to be seen everywhere that I went it honestly gave me the confidence boost that I needed at the time Time. you could even get a tattoo if you want to be a little bit more drastic or again switch up something within your style and maybe just try to dress up even for the regular day things I feel like whenever I dress up even if it's just to go to the grocery store or maybe it's a coffee shop and I feel like I'm ready for the day I actually just want to keep the day going and you know if I'm in a cute outfit maybe I'll go to the stores along the side of the street maybe I'll take the longer way around and I'll walk a little bit more in the city maybe I'll stop to go to a restaurant by myself versus is when I'm kind of in bummy clothes like I just kind of want to get home as fast as I can then I don't go outside of my comfort zone and do those extra things that kind of make everyday life a little bit more exciting speaking of things that make life a little bit more exciting that is why it's so important to get outside of your comfort zone and do things that scare you I know a lot of people have problems with going to a restaurant by themselves for example but even little things like that can challenge you and make every day a little bit more exciting now that Valentine's Day is coming up it is the perfect time to practice self-love and actually dating yourself this can be going on a date to 
to a coffee shop or taking yourself out to a fancy restaurant if you want to go that's like the hard level or even going to the movie theaters by yourself I feel like that would be a super fun experience where nobody cares if you're with someone or you're without someone it's just about going and doing it for yourself whenever I have ballet I just feel so many emotions that day whether that be excitement nervousness embarrassment I just feel it all and I feel like those days feel very uh, I don't even know how to say it but like they really stand out to me like I remember last Monday and Tuesday very well because I was in a new part of town I was doing something that I hadn't done before I had to dress in a way that I don't normally dress it is honestly really refreshing to go somewhere where you don't know anyone nobody knows you and you're just trying something new out of your comfort zone it is a little bit humbling because I'm slightly really bad at ballet but at the same time I think it's okay to be bad at things I feel like I'm really good at being okay with being bad at things and when I was younger you know what I got humbled severely in many cases because I would just be kind of clumsy and flimsy and bad at taking instructions and I would just be bad at a lot of things but like it didn't really bother me I would just be bad at it and move on and kind of laugh about it one of the things that I was bad at and it actually gave me a lot of anxiety was what I was studying in school and that just like I just did not like to be bad at that once I switched over to doing YouTube and podcasting obviously that's something where I found a lot of success in and I feel like I'm good at it and now when I do a lot of these things I'm naturally good at them but going back to ballet is something that I'm like really bad at and compared to like working out or yoga or something that comes naturally to me I have to tell myself like it's okay to be bad it's okay to not know what you're doing it's okay to be the worst one in the class nobody is judging you and you also don't have to have this pressure on you to be perfect to be good at everything that you start and I think it's really important to have it ingrained into our heads that just because we aren't good at something doesn't mean we shouldn't pursue it and shouldn't do it just for fun I mean it's not a competition and we're also at that age where not everything has to be competitive and you don't have to be the best at everything to find it worth doing if something that scares you is talking to a new stranger you can also make that a goal for yourself and even if you have a habit tracker you can track how many compliments you give to people or how many conversations you strike up I feel like that's something I should do Another thing you can do is if you have a significant other is plan surprise date nights. You know, every single weekend you guys can alternate um, between who hosts the date or it can be twice a month or once a month and you can kind of keep each other on your toes because you don't know what the other person is going to plan and it's going to make those dates feel very rememberable. Is that the word? Like say you went on a really crazy date in November. You could be like, oh, remember that date we did in November? Like it's going to make you connect the dots a little bit better and have certain memories associated to certain times or certain months. And this doesn't apply to just relationships it could be with friendships too I really want to go to like a trampoline park with my friends or go rock climbing or like something fun that gets us out of our shell I feel like it's also important to bring spontaneity with your friendships which I talked about a little bit earlier but doing things outside of the box and saying yes to things even if you're not already planning for them in your schedule if somebody hits you up and they're like oh I'm at this coffee shop do you want to come and do work with me try to make an effort to see if you can actually make it happen and not just immediately shutting that idea down just because you're more comfortable at home if you wanted to you would and it's possible to make it happen and the last way that I think that you can add some change into your routine if your routine is one that is a nine to five is finding ways to change it up in your work maybe that means bringing a new lunch every single day to work or maybe that is going outside for a walk at your lunch break or if you have one of those treadmills that go under your desk I feel like that would make work constantly super exciting or maybe that is all of a sudden just going a little bit extra with your outfits and your appearance to work and putting in that bit of extra effort it could also be offering help to others if you have extra time on your hands and using that extra time to actually get better at what you do or learn different things rather than just like wasting time or doing the things that you only have to do and this really depends who you are but I mean if you're like a teacher I feel like there's so many ways you can make that fun and exciting and different if you're a content creator there's so many different ways to create content if you're a server there's so many different types of conversations you can start up if you are a nail technician maybe you ask someone if you can do your own crazy set you know there's so many ways to spice up your work life in my personal opinion the ways that I like to keep my days exciting when I'm doing content creation or doing tasks that I don't really want to do is asking a buddy if they want to help me with something or you guys know I love going to different coffee shops and doing my work there I feel like just having a different environment automatically makes me more excited and more motivated to work I'm also always reading books for new ideas in my content or for example in these podcast episodes I like to read a bunch of books that have a lot to do with the topic and kind of create little nets of connection between them all and I feel like that makes me obviously more well-rounded to like give advice and also just like I think it makes my content more interesting there's times where I'm really invested in my long-form content and then all of a sudden I'm like you know what I'm gonna give my short form content a little bit of extra effort and then I'm having so much fun trying out new styles
styles of editing, even adding new music. My boyfriend is in psychology and he's doing some course in class right now where they're doing some sort of study about how the music that you have in the background of say while you're reading a story can really affect your emotion while you're reading it. For example, if you're reading a very monotone, boring story, but there is sad music playing in the background, it's kind of going to ignite that emotion in you while you're reading it. And so having that known, whenever you're doing certain tasks and you want to embody a vibe, you can just search up on Spotify a name for that playlist and I'm sure it'll pop up and it'll probably ignite those emotions in you, which could make it more fun and interesting. I also think it's very fun to try to listen to music in different languages. I actually just saw today that Spanish is now the second most popular language to listen to music in the world, which I think is super cool. I love Spanish music. So if you haven't given Spanish music a chance, I would highly recommend checking it out. You can also find new things to obsess over on your day to day so that you have new things to talk about, new things to think about. This could be different TV shows, different books, different content creators. And overall, the last thing I want to say is if you're trying to make day to day life exciting and still have this routine, but incorporate new fun stuff, you have to just do stuff. You know, I was talking to one of my friends and she works nine to five Monday to Friday and she was talking about how on the weekends all she has energy for is to like lay down she doesn't really do much because her work requires so much of her energy which I totally understand but I feel like there's a lot of low energy things that you can do on the weekends or after work to actually make your life more exciting rather than just feeling like you're going from the Monday to Friday and waiting for the weekends to come and you know just lounging around for the Monday to come again because if you are living like that yes you're in routine and yes you're I guess embracing the mundane but your days your years are going to go by so fast. If you have the option to add new activities, make new friends, create new memories, travel, take advantage of that. I definitely need to work on embracing the mundane and in order to do that I've been having a lot of fun using habit trackers and just putting my head down and doing it even for periods of times. Like January has been my put my head down embrace the mundane month and I bet you in February it's going to be a little bit more chaotic and I feel like as long as you're balancing the two and being able to sit with both then you're in a really good position. Overall though, if you feel like you're living a mundane life, don't feel ashamed of it. It is a flex to be able to have routine. I think it's a really good sign of maturity. You have your shit together, which is something to be really proud of. And as for those of us who like to live a little bit more chaotically, just know that if we embrace the peacefulness, we calm our cells down, not only are we going to feel better, our internal cells are going to feel better. We're probably going to age better. We're probably going to make day-to-day -day decisions that are actually going to propel us into living our best life and achieving our goals rather than just diddly daddling all day long but anyways i hope you guys enjoyed listening to this i had a lot of fun recording and i will see you guys very shortly thank you for listening bye bye